Hi. In this video, we're going to wrap up the discussion about tracking a known and constant number of objects. So we will mention some extensions of MHT, and we will talk about going from tracking a known and constant number of objects to tracking an unknown and time-varying number of objects. First, let's mention some extensions of MHT that are possible but are outside the scope of this course. So when we presented gating, we saw that it could be used to group the objects and measurements into smaller subsets. In MHT, this idea can be used to group the objects and measurements such that they are not just treated independently when we deal with the data association, but we actually run several different MHTs, one for each group. The benefit of this is that MHT for a smaller number of objects and measurements has a lower computational cost. And we can also run the different MHTs in parallel. However, doing this can become a bit complicated when previously independent objects, so that's objects that belong to different groups, when they begin to interact. In other words, when they no longer can be gated into separate groups. It can also be complicated dealing with groups that begin to separate into different groups, because this could require splitting the MHT into different parts. Another extension of MHT is called nscan MHT. In this case, the data association for the latest n time steps is formulated as a constrained optimal assignment problem, somewhat similarly to how we formulated an optimal assignment problem for the current time step. And when we do this, it's typical to not have an explicit lookup table, but instead we have hypothesis trees, and then we find only the optimal n scan association. And this means that it's possible to implicitly represent an enormous amount of global hypotheses. So the natural extension of tracking a known and constant number of objects is to consider an unknown and time varying number of objects. So a good question is, can we actually extend GNN, JPDA and MHT as they have been presented here to handle an unknown and time varying number of objects? Can they be extended to multiple object tracking? And the answer is, perhaps unsurprisingly, that we can do so. It is possible. And as a matter of fact, the original MHT formulation included inference on the number of objects. The reasons that we restricted ourselves in this course to MHT for a known number of objects are mainly that we wanted to keep things simple. We wanted to increase the complexity of the problem formulation gradually. So adapting to an unknown number of objects requires some methods for so-called track initiation and track deletion, which is the handling of when objects appear and when they disappear. Some methods for this that can be found in MOT literature are, for example, the score-based method and M over N logic. And generally, there's a lot of empirical evidence that measurement-driven object initiation works well. However, we're not going to extend GNN, JPDA, and MHT in this way. Instead, we're going to use a powerful set of modeling tools called random finite sets in order to model MOT. And then we're going to show how MOT algorithms can be derived using this RFS modeling. Okay, that's all we had about tracking a known number of objects. Now you can go ahead and work on some of the quiz questions and the assignments.